Hi everybody, Dave the Maverick Beekeeper. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, for anybody who's new, you're also welcome. So, I hope you enjoyed the history of the skep and the associated hives and their development through the years, through the centuries. Um, what we're going back to is back to the business, if you like. We're going back to disease of the day, um, and it'll be episode five, American Fowl Brood. What I will say at this point is, is a lot of information out there reference American Fowl Brood. Now, each, um, uh, locale, if you like, is different. Um, for, in, for instance, England's different to Wales, Wales is different to Scotland and America. They do their thing. So the legislation I'm not going to go into, I'll leave that to you um, to research that yourself. Um, most of the stuff I'm going to refer to today is basically the two sites I've used before. Uh, for me, I get continuity with that. And that's the Animal and Plant Health Agency in the UK. Uh, more so underscoring them is the B unit. There's lots of information there with reference to brood disorders. And the other one is the Bee Informed Partnership, which again, I found to be useful. Um, they lay out in a nice simple way for everybody to understand. So I won't get into the semantics of it. I will obviously keep to uh, signs, symptoms and how we deal with it. And that brings me on to things like uh, treatments. The treatments in the UK, uh, certainly Scotland and Wales, are different. America uses uh, other treatments, OTC, etc. Um, we don't use that anymore. Uh, and certainly for FB, which is a really horrible brood disease to get within your own apiaries and colonies. Um, and something hope that in the future, none of you experience that. Um, certainly I don't want to experience it. So there is a, a sort of element of being vigilant throughout the season which I'm more than aware of um, I'm not an expert as I said before my learning curve is massive as it's been uh, as I've been putting up this stuff um, I've learned a lot of stuff and every day is a school day as far as I'm concerned and I'm not arrogant enough to say that I know everything because I don't so that's the format I'm looking at so I'm keeping it nice and generic nice and simple and not too heavy on the brain um, I've got two brain cells and once one gets topped up, that's me. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy um, what I put up. News. I haven't got any news on the disaster from yesterday, my shed. Um, I haven't phoned my wife today, so I haven't spoken to her, so I'll know to, at the end of today and by the time this video comes up, hopefully the roof's back on. I've got a big tarpaulin on the inside at the moment, keeping everything dry, because the next thing I want is all my kit to be wet. Uh, it just would be horrendous. So that's what we're looking at. So hopefully, um, over the next few minutes, we'll be covering AFB, and uh, please enjoy. Remember uh, to like and subscribe and comment uh, if you feel that you need to add something to it. I have had good responses for disease of the day, um, which I thank you for, and that keeps me going. Uh, plus, plus my enthusiasm for the, the up and coming season to make sure that I get things right. Uh, and that's a priority for me to make sure that my bees are gonna be healthy. So episode five, disease of the day, foul brood, enjoy. Before I cover the main subject matter of American fowl brood, I just want to cover the bee immune system. So a little background to bee anatomy. The definitive sign of colony collapse is often sudden absconding of the worker force. This disappearance appears to be mainly due to the aspect of the bee colony level immune response that normally helps to purge an infection. But when conditions favor, certain positive feedback loops can result in excessive or complete depopulation of the hive. To better understand what happens, we need to have a firm grasp of how the bee immune system functions. The soundbite version that we all heard when the honeybee genome was sequenced is that bees had fewer immune genes than other insects. This was rather misleading. The honeybee colony is a complex superorganism with physical, chemical and behavioural defences at various levels. At that of the individual, cell, the individual bee, the full colony and at a level of the local population. Bees have a robust and effective immune system. They just do things a bit differently than the solitary flies to which they were compared. So, American fowl brood. This is a quote that comes from Wikipedia. 
Paean bacillus larva is a species of bacterium found worldwide which causes American fowl brood, a fatal disease of larvae of honeybees, Apis mellifera. It is a gram-positive rod-shaped bacterium which forms spores which can remain viable for at least 35 years. Interesting. So how does AFP spread? American fowl brood, Paean bacillus larvae, is introduced into the hive by drifting bees from nearby colonies. Infective equipment, tools, and of course beekeepers, and robbing. The infection begins when spores enter the hive and then food contaminated by spores is fed to the larvae by the nurse bees. Once spores are in the midgut, the bacteria take over using the larvae as a source of nourishment. After the cells are sealed, death occurs. If death occurs while in the pupil stage, there may be a protruding tongue present. When there is a serious infection, you can notice moisture on the sealed brood as they start to sink. Sunken cells are a result of decomposing larva. American fowl brood is very contagious and all equipment must be cleaned before using it in healthy hives. The AFB scale is very hard for the bees to remove and can infect colonies for years. This is why some states have a burn only policy, but others allow the use of antibiotics to control the disease. It is important to have the AFB tested by a lab uh, to identify if the AFB strain is resistant. Now, I spoke there of certain states. I refer to uh, United States of America. They do things slightly differently. I'll cover later on in this uh, session um, our approach as far as dealing with AFB. So let's now talk about the symptoms. What you will notice is spotty brood pattern perforated seal brood with coffee brown larvae inside. You will also always notice sunken sealed brood, coffee brown larvae sunken to the bottom of the cell. Moisture on sunken sealed brood, protruding pupil tongue, which is rare, and a rotting smell, compared to rotting meat or sulfurous chicken house. Sometimes, it's not always detectable. Light to dark brown to black scale that is hard to remove. Often colonies next to infected colonies will show symptoms of the disease. And of course, when tested, the larvae rope at least two centimeters. So what is the treatment? Current thoughts are, is that it is best to burn all colonies infected of AFB. The control of AFB and EFB disease is a responsibility of the National Bee Unit Inspectors who carry out a risk-based inspection program on registered colonies across England and Wales. If you keep honeybee colonies in England or Wales, you may be contacted by your local bee inspector for an inspection of your bees. And of course, this will only be when uh, the lab sample has been tested and proved to be containing that particular bacterium from AFB. So where the fowl brood is suspected, the inspector will test the symptomatic larva by using a lateral flow device, LFD, as previously mentioned in the EFB. This will be sent to the laboratory to either confirm a positive or negative diagnosis. During this time, the inspector will issue what they call a standstill notice prohibiting the removal of bees, bee byproducts and equipment from the apiary. If fowl brood is confirmed, the inspector will carry out necessary disease control measures. These can include destruction of infected colonies, both EFB or AFB, antibiotic treatment, EFB only or shook swarm, EFB, as well as further inspections of any colonies which have been associated with disease colony colonies. After six to eight weeks, the inspector will return to carry out a follow-up inspection. If there are no further symptoms of disease, the standstill is withdrawn. Normally, the bee inspector will visit again during the following season to be sure the disease has been completely controlled. 
So with this in mind, uh, the bee unit goes on to say, National beehive unit cleaning and sterilization honeybee colonies are subject to infection or infestation by a range of pests and diseases. These include insects, mites, fungi, viruses and bacteria such as microbes that cause American or European fowl brood. Paeambacillus larvae and Melissococcus plutonius Honeybees are social insects and are at risk of epidemics. So it is essential that beekeepers not only recognize the signs, such as pests and diseases, but also know how to reduce their impact in colonies, apiaries, and the locality. A key factor in preventing the spread of infection is of course, good hygiene. For more information on rules, regulations in each area of the United Kingdom, there are three orders currently in place. The first one, the Bee Diseases and Pest Control Brackets Scotland Order 2007, number 506. The Bee Diseases and Pest Control Brackets England Order 2006 is number 342. And lastly, the Bee Diseases and Pest Control Brackets Wales Order 2006 is number 1710 brackets W.172. I'm not going to read these because they are extremely long documents, as you would imagine, produced by the government. I will leave this in the description so you can research this yourself. And if you're into such reading, you'll find it a very useful tool. Very, very sad indeed. Uh, I would say it's one of the darker sides of beekeeping. Very, very sad. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you got something from that and you've learned something. I certainly have, and it's the darker side of beekeeping. So without bringing the mood down too much, um, I'm gonna throw a bit of a challenge out to you guys. Uh, basically, I'll let you choose what subject you want me to do as far as uh, disease of the day is concerned so what I'd like you to do is put your comments in the comments section below and of course if you wish to subscribe the newcomers to the channel then please do that as well so I'll leave it to you anything you like put it down and I will work on that and then once I get an opinion of what you guys want me to cover I'll then produce that um, and I'll put it up as soon as I can so again thank you for watching and as always be safe, be happy, be good to one another and primarily look after your bees. Thank you.